Well, welcome to the Simplified Organization Podcast, 15-minute conversations with real moms about managing our homes and family life cheerfully to the glory of God. We can actually enjoy housework and love being homemakers when we focus on truth and gratitude. I'm Misty Winkler, and I run Simply Convivial, a blog, podcast, and community helping women excel at homemaking and do life cheerfully. I'm also author of the book, How to Use a Planner Without Wasting Time. And today we're joined by one of our community members, Leanne Erickson. Leanne has been homemaking since 1994. That was, my kids like to say, in the 1900s. <laughs> She and David have lived in their townhouse in San Clemente, a coastal Southern California town for 24 years. They have four adult children who were given a Christian education at home and a local day school, a son in Phoenix who will be married this fall, a married daughter in Boston, and a daughter and a son both studying at Grove City College near Pittsburgh. She is frequently on a plane to one of these cities in order to visit the kids or to Minneapolis to visit her and her husband's parents. In her leisure time, she enjoys knitting, reading, fellowshipping with their church family, studying foreign languages on Duolingo, and going out dancing with her husband. That's wonderful. Thank you for joining me, Leanne. Oh, thank you for having me. What kind of dancing? Ballroom dancing and Latin dancing. But we're very much beginners. We've only started about a year and a half ago. <laughs> very fun. That that comes in handy at weddings. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been inside our community for several years now and been through our community coaching program. And so I wanted to have you on today. I think it's always so encouraging to hear from the older homes, older moms. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Older yeah. is good. It is good. And it's good to look back and see just from that. You get, have the perspective, which when you're in the middle, it can be very hard to have the perspective. So we need to hear it from those who do have the perspective of 24 plus years. Yeah. So where were you at when you joined membership or why did you want to start community coaching? Yes, I joined membership probably about a, a three quarters of a year before, maybe it was less than that, but before I realized what community coaching was, I had never heard of you. I wish I had heard of you earlier, but when I did, I was very intrigued. I still had a little homeschooling left. I had two kids in the home still, but they were, they're older high school kids. I was, my personal feelings about my homemaking at that time were, uh, a little mixed things where I was managing, but often tempted to discouragement thinking, shouldn't I have accomplished more than I have by this time? And probably more specifically about just the accumulation of things in my home. I thought I should be more organized than I was. Also, before I discovered you, Misty, and Simply Convivial, I had tried many different other organization programs, and I don't think any of them had any kind of emphasis on how to co-make it as a Christian or how to organize with a kind of a Christian perspective. Although I do remember I hired one gal for one-on-one -on -one coaching. I believe she was a Christian. However, there was never any kind of motivation for the thing she was coaching me about. The motivation was never about honoring the Lord with it. It was more about making myself feel better about mm. home, about myself. You'll be more peaceful if you can just get everything in order. And if you just follow these steps, this will happen for you. And I did learn some things and I didn't, it wasn't all, it wasn't all bad, but it, when it was over, it wasn't very satisfying. It didn't really stick. I hadn't really changed any of my habits. So when I found Simply Convivial, and I started coming at first to the weekly seminars. I was so thankful for the connection between my theology and seeing, wanting to see my homemaking as honoring the Lord, glorifying the Lord. So then when it came time for community coaching, that was a no brainer. Of course, I'm going to sign up for community coaching. I need all, I need more of this. <laughs> so that's maybe the long answer to how I got, how I, what, where I was when I joined. Yeah. When I was 
struggling myself as a young mom trying to figure out like, why am I even doing this? Why does this even matter? The only encouragement that did stick that did that was meaningful and lasting is anything that connects it to obeying God, loving God, doing what he has called us to do. And we do find satisfaction and happiness as a consequence of walking faithfully. But when we seek just our own happiness, right. Miss the boat there. Right. Yeah. When, so that was when I had come to Simply Convivial, I had already made some big adjustments in my head over the years. Oh, yes, my homemaking should honor the Lord. And this is a good work I'm doing. I have a memory when I was a brand, a brand new homemaker. My, I knew I, I wanted to be a homemaker, but my attitude about it was very different. I was thinking more like, the chores I have to do around here are a necessary obstacle to get to real yes. good work, to get to real good works, like right. evangelizing my neighbors, um, working on outreach programs at the church, or all those things are good things, but I really never saw my homemaking efforts or my chores as a good work that I was doing unto the Lord. It was really just, you just have to take care of this and, but do a good job at it. But then once you, once that is over, then you can are ready for a good work. So that mind shift somewhere happened. I wish it had happened earlier than it had, but anyhow, it did happen eventually. And now I see very clearly, oh, wait a minute. This is what the Lord has me doing. And this is good work. I'm able to bless people around me, my family. And it's very satisfying to to do my work as unto the Lord and not just for myself or for the praise of man. So has that shifted, changed, maybe been applied differently now that you are an empty nester when it's not kids mm-hmm. you're raising and growing in the home? How is homemaking different or maybe the same? Okay. That's interesting. Interesting question. I think some parts are out of the same because I'm, I still want to see my work that I'm doing around the house as honoring the Lord. So that mm-hmm. motivation is the same. But maybe what I'm doing is very different. I have a lot of more flexibility now than I had when I had kids in the home. And I, in some ways, it's more respons- it feels like more responsibility because I'm the boss of my time. And so I need to be making sure I'm making good choices, making good choices, organizing my time and my resources so that I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do, doing what my husband wants me to do. Yeah. I'm not sure what, how, yeah, I haven't thought about that question a lot yet. But. So then with a perspective change there or just connecting things in a more spiritually minded way, or you just connecting the theology and the practical. Yes. What did that end up looking like in practice? Ah, okay. This is how it, this is what I, where I noticed it when I was realizing this is what's happening, but I also still feel like it happens now yeah. when I catch myself. Uh, not wanting to do some chore that I know must be done or being tempted to grumble about this or have a bad attitude. I'm able to repent a lot quicker. I just, oh Lord, forgive me. I remember times many years ago where I would just, I wasn't outwardly grumbling to my family, but I was inwardly just entertaining all kinds of grumbly thoughts about the laundry and how other people in the house were They weren't following my rules. They weren't putting their socks where I asked them to or things like this. And I would just inside make such a big deal about it. Like I was so put upon that, that, that the rest of the family couldn't just do what I wanted them to do. And I oh praise the Lord. He forgives us. Cause I know I see now like how gross that was that I was doing that. Also the Lord was sanctifying me and, and now, so anyhow, so when you say, how does that look? I'm just much, much quicker to repent of my bad attitude. I ca- I catch it in ways that I just didn't use. I never used to catch it before. I used to think it was okay. Yeah. It was all right to be like that. That That's what moms do. They're allowed to, they're allowed to be in charge and be grumpy if people aren't doing what they want, what they want them to do. But yeah. 
So I hope I've become sweeter to my family. You can ask my husband and my kids if I'm sweeter now than I was. I hope they would say yes, but <laughs> anyhow, yeah. So maybe that's the main thing for me where I see my theology connecting to my homemaking. I don't know that I'm actually keeping the house cleaner than I was before, but I'm doing it much more cheerfully. Yeah. And so you said at the beginning, you were feeling like maybe you should have been farther along in this journey than you were, which I think we all have moments. <laughs> Is this all? Yes. <laughs> Why am I not farther ahead on whichever yes. journey than I am? But how did that perspective or attitude change as you mm. were thinking about uh, it? Or yeah. I think it's changed in that I, I suppose growing in contentment and growing in realizing that having conversations with my husband about that topic has been very helpful because he has reminded me, Leanne, you were doing other things that you and I wanted you to do when you're, especially when you were homeschooling the kids and you weren't keeping closets organized to a certain standard. That was all right. That's what I wanted you to do. And I'm happy with the way the house is. So talking to him a lot has been helpful because he has not, he has encouraged me to see things. He, my temptation to perfectionism or my falling into perfectionism, he's a good, he's a good curb for that. So talking with him a lot has helped. But then just the weekly reminders on the seminars and all the, just the regular theme that's in the course material of of avoiding perfectionism or, or seeing these kinds of discouraging thoughts as, as giving into a temptation or a, giving into a perfectionistic mindset that doesn't actually help me. That's been helpful. Yeah. We all need those reminders over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm pretty, yeah. And I'm not done. I still, I, there are times where I still will open a cabin and go, Oh yeah, that hasn't been done yet. And wouldn't that have been nice if I had done that before, but now I, I think I'm just not, I think I'm not thinking that as often, but just mm -hmm. seeing, okay, put that on the list. When you get to it, you'll get to it. And being faithful with what's right in front of me and not fretting about the things that are in the future or things that I haven't done yet. I can only do what's right in front of me. <laughs> That's what all of us can do. So what would you, what would be your Go to encouragement to give someone, maybe your daughters as they're getting started on their homemaking, or whoever is watching or listening and they're just getting started on homemaking. What's your go to insight to share? Okay, go to insight. Okay. I thought about this question not in relationship to my newly married daughter, but since you put it that way, one thing that I often want to encourage her about is to run it all by her husband first. See, see what, when she talks about their home situation and things that the things that they're dealing with, I say, I always say, what does Ben think? <laughs> so ask Ben what he thinks, or ask your husband what he thinks. You might find out that he's really happy with the way you're running the house. <laughs> so don't make it harder for yourself than you need to. But I realize not everybody might have a husband like that. Maybe your husband does want you to improve in this or that. And then the other thing, of course, I would say sign up for community coaching. It's it was it's really helpful. And there's so many resources in Simply Convivial. It's, it's so abundant. You just have to mine out the things that work for you. You don't get overwhelmed. You'll want to get overwhelmed, but don't just take what you can. And then the other thing is believe what God says in his word, that he is working difficulty for good in your life. I try to remind myself that I have to keep reminding myself of that. And I'm sure I will still, that when I face difficulties, even the, yeah, the trials I have in doing my homemaking, that I need to believe that God is working this for some good in my life and to receive it with joy, roll up my sleeves, do the work. And when I'm overwhelmed, cry out to him, ask him for help. Okay. That's a lot of, that's a lot of suggestions there. A lot of. That's good. That's perspective. Those are okay. all great. <laughs> so you mentioned community coaching. What, what about it did you find most helpful or how did it? Yes. Uh, there, 
yeah, what I mentioned before is just you're it's so abundant with ideas and things to think of. I had I already had a few things in place in my own life. So it wasn't like everything was completely new. I didn't have to restart a calendar or things. But I had never had the concept of a daily card before. That was awesome. That's a great one. There's a lot of good things about it. So just going through and going through it systematically with coaching, whereas before coaching, I had access to all the courses, but I didn't really have a plan for stepping through the courses. So the coaching was helpful for that. Also, when a new idea or tool was suggested in the coaching, new to me, and then in Simply Convivial, or no, Convivial Circle, do we still call it? Do you still call it's it? It's all Convivial Circle. It's all now, convivial. Yeah, it's, yep. In Convivial Circle, there would people would call for suggestions or show us how you have implemented this. And that was always very interesting to see, oh, this is one way I could do it. Giving, yeah. Getting ideas the way other ladies were doing it was is very helpful, especially with something new that I had never done before, like the dashboard. <laughs> yeah, it's not like there's one right way to do it. And Correct. Then if everyone just did it this way, it would all work out. And unfortunately, that is the way some organizing gurus like to do it and I've tried those things and they this is much better where I can I customize everything you teach me Misty to work in my home I love it perfect what's one of your favorite personalizations okay I love my daily card now and I love my dashboard I feel very connected to them yeah yeah I love those things I also like this isn't really a tool, but I love the weekly seminars. That's not really a personalization, but I just love those kind of pep talks during the week. Wonderful. And it's always so fun too, to see you on the Zooms. My favorite piece are the Zoom meetups where we, where we okay. talk about everything. Yes. Those, I haven't been able to come to as many of those as I would like, just because my, the way my schedule is. And I like to come when I can. Where we get on it. Cause it's not just about, you know, what I have to say it's all of us sharing what it looks like in different contexts and situations yes. and life stages and yes. to just be supporting one another in doing the good work that God's put before us it's nice to know that you're not the only one <laughs> yes yeah it a lot yes I can think of many times over my homemaking and childbearing years where I often felt very, it feels, it's a very isolating job, mm -hmm. especially when your children are very little and you're having very few conversations with adults. It, it can be very isolating. So I can imagine this, I would have eaten this up <laughs> had I, had I found it earlier. Thank you so much for joining me today, Leanne. It's been mm -hmm. fun to get to know you inside the community and to chat with you today about homemaking and just really digging into the good work that God has called us to. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Simplified Organization. Leanne is always a cheerful face with an encouraging word when she comes to our meetups. And I knew that you would enjoy hearing her perspective and story today. If you want to join a community that is full of women who are doing their best to honor God in the work set before them to do in their homes, then you can find that at Simply Convivial. We're about to start a new round of community coaching where we're going to spend the whole school year, August through June, working through the Simplified Organization Trilogy, our signature program. Organize your attitude, streamline your homemaking, and work your plan. One step at a time, week by week, will add new encouragement and baby steps to take that will help us manage life well and manage life cheerfully, all to the honor and glory of God. Community coaching is included in your enrollment, but the next group closes August 29th. So you want to get started with us now, and you can do that by clicking the link in the description below or going to simplyconvivial.com and click the green enroll button. Every step of the way, we apply our tagline, repent, rejoice, repeat.